What's up guys? So what I got here is a couple of Cornish game hens. I've already washed them off, patted them dry, uh, removed any giblets that were inside or whatever, tossed them. I don't use the giblets unless I want to make a gravy with them or something. Uh, and also I've got several ingredients here for the rub that we're going to use on these. I've got some coarse salt, garlic powder, coarse ground pepper, and some white table sugar. And I got some paprika here. And a couple of fresh sprigs of rosemary that have been washed. And I got my shaker. So let's get in on this and uh, get these bad boys rubbed down, shall we? It's okay for the rub. We're gonna go ahead and mix uh, our ingredients in our little shaker here. You can do it in a bowl, whatever. I'm using my shaker. I've got a tablespoon of coarse sea salt. I've got a tablespoon of garlic powder. Tablespoon of black pepper, coarse black pepper. Tablespoon of white sugar, table sugar. And a quarter cup of uh, some paprika. That paprika is going to help add a little color to the bird, or birds in this case. I'm just going to kind of mix them around to rub. Give it, give it a little taste if you want. Just pinch off a little bit and taste it. Oh yeah, that's good. So I'm going to cap off my shaker here. I do recommend having a shaker or get you an old uh, ingredients, uh, like an old shaker for your spices and just reuse it and put your stuff in it. So anyways, we've got our two birds here. First thing I want to do is take our rosemary sprigs and go ahead and stuff them inside. And why we're doing this is um, that rosemary is going to permeate the bird really well. Um, if you don't have rosemary sprigs available, you can always add the rosemary to your rub and just coat the bird real good with it. But if you put the sprigs inside the bird, you're gonna get more um, more aromatics going on inside the bird and permeate the meat better, so. Okay, we need a sticking agent for the rub. I'm using canola oil, you can use vegetable oil. Um, usually I like to use some kind of cooking oil. And just kinda, you don't need a lot, just enough. Just like that. Just enough to coat everything real good. Get it all over the wings real good, all over the legs, flip them over, rub them down, oh no. Yep, just flip them back over. That one's rubbed down real good and you got some excess oil in your hands, go ahead and kind of transfer it to the next bird. The oil will also kind of help brown up the skin some as these cook. Okay. Go ahead and get the oil on. Keep paper towels handy so you can wipe your hands off in between moments. Like I have a whole roll of paper towels, paper towels available. So just trying to get your hands wiped off good. Got our shaker of spices. Let's go ahead and just season up the bird. I love that color that paprika gives to a piece of meat. It just looks so good. Flip it over, flip this one over. Get in the uh, little, all the little crevices. Just get in there real good, get some of that flavor in there. Okay. okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna flip them over one more time. So I want the rub to kind of sit on there as much as possible. And it's important that you have the birds dry because you can see sometimes if there's any moisture, it'll knock your rub off. 
And there we have it. Two fully rubbed Cornish game hens. So I still got some rub left in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them on a smoker and I'm gonna sprinkle all the extra rub on these uh, right before, just any that might have come off the birds in the fridge. But I'm gonna let these sit in the fridge for uh, about two hours or more. You can let them sit in there however long you want, really. Longer the better, honestly, because you're gonna get more flavor uh, kind of set up like a marinade, and uh, it just makes the meat even better. Um, I wouldn't do it overnight, though, and then your spices might be a little overpowering, but I'm gonna cook these for dinner. It's about almost 11 o'clock here, my time right now, so I'm not gonna put these on until about four o'clock or so. We'll get the smoker set up here briefly, and uh, we'll go over setting that up for this smoke, for this particular cook. So, see you in a bit. All right guys, what I got here is some mesquite base lump in here. I'm going for more of a hickory flavor on this these uh, Cornish game hens, but I've got a mesquite base lump. There'll be a little mesquite in there, not gonna hurt anything. The hickory should be way more pronounced than anything. Uh, you you typically should go with like an oak base lump or a pecan base lump, uh, but mesquite won't hurt anything. I just already have mesquite in here from a prior cook. So yeah, let's uh, get a little closer here. Okay, this is only gonna be like an hour, two hour smoke tops. So we've got our base lump charcoal in here already, a lot of little pieces. I wanna burn them up just so I can get rid of them. I've got some uh, some hickory smoking chunks I'm gonna use here. And uh, I'm only gonna put, you know, a couple in here, just around the, the mound here. Just kind of around the center fl flame where I'm gonna be lighting this uh, grill up. Okay, so this will be this will be enough for this cook. Next, I'm gonna take my chimney, set it right on top for the moment. Put a little bit of this smoke. I put a few pieces of this royal oak lump in here. And I bought these uh, tumbleweed fire starters. They're like four dollars or five bucks a pack, and there's like 16 of them. Man, these are the by far the best fire starters I've ever used. So we're gonna put these in the middle. Using my char grill or chimney, of course. Get it lit. All right. Make sure the bottom damper is wide open, of course. I'm gonna set this right on the middle. And we're gonna let these coals get really hot. Then I'll dump them in. All right, guys, we got a fire going down here. I actually caught my smoking chunks on fire, no big deal. I had a couple more in there, no biggie. Go ahead and drop uh, our lit coals in. Okay guys, we are sitting about 235 right now on the grill, which is okay. Still a good smoking temp. I'm gonna lose some of that temp anyways as I get this going. Let's go ahead and get the birds on here. Now I want to cook these but babies with their backs down. Alright, so I got them both side by side here. Get my gloves off. Close it up. Let her cook away. Right now I got the vent set about just under the number one mark on top and I've got it set just below the number one on the bottom. I'll be monitoring this for the next half hour or so, adjusting vents as I need to. Um, typically I end up hovering around the number one mark always um, on both top and bottom. Whatever I got the top set to, I set the bottom to. That's how I've always done it with the acorn. 
and it's always worked out marvelously. So, if this thing starts to drop below my target temp, I will open up the vent some. To allow just a little bit though. You don't need to open up a lot. I might open it up just to the one or just past the one, but never really more than that. I always kind of fluctuate between uh, about 10 degrees. That's not a problem. I've noticed on many ceramics it's like that. But as long as you're hovering around that 225, 230, you're good. Even if you get up to 250, don't panic. Dial your vents down, open it up, let some fresh air in, close it real quick. You're just trying to get the heat out and then start again. So we will come and check on these here in a little bit um, and see how we're doing. Okay, the wind's whipping a little bit. Apologize about that, but let's take a look at these chickens. Or hens, I should say. Oh, uh, look at that color. Remember, we put some rosemary on the inside, so, but yeah, the meats are looking great. Got some nice color to them. So we're gonna, we're about the halfway mark on the smoke. I'll be checking the temperature here shortly to see if we are uh, close to being done with these. I wanna get them up to about 170 degrees. Um, and then I'll know they're done. All right, guys, we've been cooking for just a little over an hour. We're gonna check on these babies. Got my little thermal pin here. I'm gonna go right into the joint area. Getting close. What I like to do, as you can see, these are getting kind of dark. What I like to do typically is I'll, um, I'm gonna put some foil over top so it kind of reduces any chance of them getting any darker. But I mean, they smell great. So we'll get back uh, here when they're done. All right, guys, here's our Cornish game hens. Um, let's go ahead and cut into the breast, see how we came out. Oh, look at all that juice just spilling out of the chicken. I say chicken because they are actually classified as like a hybrid chicken. So, I'm gonna try it, man, look at it, just falling apart actually. The wing just came right off. So, I'm gonna pull this off here, try a bit. All right, there it is. So good, man. I'm gonna get some more here. Hmm. This is like Thanksgiving come early, but with chicken. So good, man. So if you guys get a chance, plate them up with whatever side you want, whatever you prefer. But uh, anyways, until next time.